Now that it's December and the first official day of winter is just a few weeks away, the snow flurries are slowly starting to come in and the Christmas lights are starting to go up. And if you're looking forward to capturing all the magic of winter and holiday lights on 35mm or 120 film, but not sure which film stock to pick, here's my shooting experience and guide on which film stocks to pick. While this is by no means a comprehensive list of films shot in the winter, just what I've managed to shoot over the last five years. Living in Minnesota has given me plenty of opportunities to capture the various types of snowy conditions. Hey, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Nathan Trimbach, a Minnesota-based film and digital photographer, and I'm just sharing all my excitement and experiences in the world of photography on here. I'm excited for today's video because what I've done here is I've shot 30 different film stocks in the winter, and I've made a pretty in-depth kind of analysis, comparison, and notes on what I think are the best film stocks to pick during the winter. So it's definitely going to be a longer one, but I've chapterized it and organized it in ways where you can kind to jump ahead and skip around or if you have all the time right now to check out the video i hope you learn something and then enjoy what i have to share so let's go ahead and dive in so welcome to my video of finding the best 35 millimeter and 120 film for winter and holiday lights here's the full list of films i'll go through the trees are where i have taken photos of christmas or holiday lights so first i'm going to show some winter snowy comparison photos and then get into all the photos individually of each film stock. Next, I'll look into holiday lights and show some comparisons and then show photos of each individual film stock. And last, I'll share my top rated films based on five different categories. So let's take a look at films shot in the snow. I want to share a few comparisons and how to approach winter film photography. First is the impact of lighting on your scene. The top three frames have very little variation in them, shot within a few minutes of each other. Whereas once you have a bright sunny day, the way the colors come out in the scene changes by the film type. Also, a lot can change based on if you choose color negative, color positive, or black and white film. Also, the time of day matters. Even shots at the same time can render very different looks. I love this one between Ektar and Gold. It can also greatly impact how warm or cool a scene looks in the winter. I'm personally not a big black and white film shooter. I tend to prefer color, although I definitely shoot a lot more black and white in the winter. But even then, it can make a large difference in how the scene renders. I especially like the ectochrome in the bottom left and how it feels slightly warm in the sunlight, but very cold in the shade. Versus the same shot in black and white has great contrast between light and shadow, but I don't feel the same temperature feeling. Whereas I like the black and white in all the rest of the shots here. Versus when comparing here, even on a very overcast misty day, black and white has a magical look. While the Cinestill 400D makes it feel like a warmer or cozier winter experience. On the polar opposite side, slide film on a very snowy day, especially this Fuji Chrome T64, makes the scene feel like you're living in the North Pole. So as you can see, a lot of variation from time of day sun, clouds, or haze, day or night, or if you shoot color, slide, or black and white film has a huge impact on the feelings and temperature of a scene. And some scenes can really come alive more in the day or in the nighttime during the winter. And even between two tungsten films, the color temperature can have very different feelings. The Porsche 100T feels very creamy winter, while the Fuji T64 feels sub-zero. So now let's get into the films. Going in alphabetical order, here's Cine Still 50D. Cine Still 50D is personally one of my least shot films that for whatever reason, I actually really do enjoy shooting in the winter. I think it's really great for sunny days. It has a very lovely dreamy effect and the halations are really cool in the skyline. Overall, I think it's very warm in the winter. However, overcast days are more muted and harder to shoot because it's a 50 ISO film. So I would stick to sunny days to get a more dreamy look. Overall, I think Cinestill 50D is a great film for sunny winter days. 
Next up is CineStill 400D. On misty overcast days, CineStill 400D has a very pleasant, cozy feeling to it. With a mix of white, blacks, and browns, and icy lakes, I think it has just this very nice look. On sunny days, the blue sky comes out while still maintaining a warm feeling. I like these picnic trees and how they look with the, the sun and the shade. On very cloudy days, I think it struggles to look good in most circumstances, but I do love this ice shot here. During golden hour, it has a really nice glow in the snow, as well as halation in the sky. Overall, I think CineStill 400D is a good all-around film to shoot in the winter, especially on sunny and hazy days. It might struggle a little bit on very overcast days, though. Next up is CineStill 800T. I mostly shoot at night, but since it's a tungsten film and leans a little cooler, I think it would be a great film to shoot more during the day. Golden Hour has a nice look, and against the frozen lake, it looks like a sea of glass. but at the nighttime, it really comes alive. You see the halations and all the motion blur, I think adds a really nice effect to the film. Especially on days when it was snowing like crazy, it was a lot of fun to shoot. So overall, I think CineStill 800T is a great choice, especially for golden hour and nighttime. Next up is CineStill BWXX. BWXX is a very high contrast film with deep black and light whites. It can make winter scenes very dramatic. At night, this continues to be the case where the bright white snow and dark shadows are even more pronounced. I really love the shot and how glowing the lights are and how the, the left half of the scene is starting to get darker and darker. Overall, I think Sinistil BWXX is a good film for winter, especially if you like very high contrast black and white. Next up is Fujikum T64, a tungsten slide film that's no longer made. If you've watched videos on my channel before, you'd know that T64 is one of my favorite films. I think this film absolutely shines in the winter. The icy blue cast that the film makes mixed with the snow and the lights makes for this beautiful freezing look. And then when I shot a very overcast day, it had this very unique sub-zero temperature look. I like when there are certain scenes that have mixed lighting and how the warm versus blue lights look. And then when going skiing, it was fun to see the various ways that this film looked and the blue glow from it. Overall, I think T64 is a great film for nighttime shooting in the winter, and if it were still around, I would pick it up in a heartbeat. Next up is Fujichrome 64T Type 2, another discontinued tungsten film stock. In my experience of shooting this film, it leans more purple than the blue from T64. It makes winter scenes almost have a little bit more of an eerie look, which I really enjoyed. I like the motion blur from these scenes. In Blue Hour, it leans so purple you'd think it was shot on Velvia during Golden Hour. Overall, I liked the look of Fujichrome 64T Type 2 in the winter for both Night and Blue Hour. Next up is Fujichrome Velvia 50. This film is famous for its very saturated tones that especially come alive in golden and blue hour. The blues, purples, and reds look great in contrast to the cool blues. Or on overcast days, near blue hour, it has a very cold tone. I especially love this shot here. It was overcast and near blue hour and just had this very cold feeling, like I need to zip up my coat right now. On clear days, the snow itself starts to look a bluish purple. I love the contrast of light in the shot. You see a little bit of that bluish purple in the snow as well as some of the red or orangish look from the sun on the snow. 
and this frosted backboard of the hoop looks really cool. On overcast days in the middle of the day, I didn't think it, its look was quite as strong. Feels like a very muted tones. Unless you have some color in the scene, then it, it can work. Overall, I think Velvia 50 shines during golden and blue hour in the winter. Next up is the now discontinued Velvia 100. I only shot a few rolls of this during the winter. I think it was hard to shoot in the bright daylight since it was a little overexposed, but I think the scenes of less contrast, it has a pleasant and not as overly saturated look that Velvia 50 had. I like this shot where the sunlight is backlit. Some of my favorite shots were on this very misty day. I love the sun shining through the trees here and how frosted these two trees look. Overall, I think Velvia 100 is a good film to shoot in the winter in lower contrast scenes, especially in the fog or mist. Next up is a discontinued Fuji Tungsten film called NPL 160T. This film has a mix of white purple looks in the lights that works well at night. Now I only shot one or two rolls of this in the winter. I like this shot a lot and how the snow slopes to the right. Overall, I think it has a good look, but you'll see later on it has a better look with the Christmas lights. Fuji Color Pro 400H, another film <laughs> killed by Fuji. This is one of my favorite portrait films to shoot, and I tried a bit of it in the winter. I think in scenes where there's only a little color, especially blue, green, or red, it popped. But in scenes of no color, I think the tint felt a little off and not as pleasing. Sunny days were nice and a little dreamy. As you can see, there's a little bit of green and red, so it adds to the color of the scene. Same with this, I like the little green that's up in the middle of the frame. But foggy or heavy snow days, it had a much stronger green cast to it. Especially right here, you see the green cast in the tree trunk. I think many of these shots would actually be better in black and white or another film. But like I said, when it's contrasted with someone in the shot and with color, it turned out really nice. Overall, if you have any Fuji Pro 400H left, I would not shoot it for the winter unless you have people in your shots with very bright colored clothes. Here's another expired film called Fuji Superior Riela. I loved this film for shooting in the winter, especially during golden hour. Even during the day, the colors turned out very lovely. I like the colors in these chairs and the blue from the bidet maxka, as well as the blue doors here. And at blue hour, it just shined. RIP again, Fujifilm. Overall, if you can get your hands on some Fuji Riela, I would say it'd be a good film to try in the winter. Next up is Fuji Superia Extra 400, a film I've shot very many rolls of. Fuji Color Superior Extra 400 looked great during sunny days. And I think during golden hour it had a nice look to it as well. I think it had fairly decent results during overcast days in some instances, while feeling a little bit more bland in others, like these. I think overall it had a pleasant look to it, especially on sunny days. On overcast days, I think it was a little less enjoyable and I would pass on it. Next up is Fujifilm Neopan 100 Acros version 2. This is one of my favorite black and white films to shoot in the winter. It has a very good amount of contrast in black and white while still maintaining a lot of the mid-tones. I think especially it did best during sunny days. On overcast days, there were a lot of good gradations between light and dark. But since it's a 100 ISO film, a different one might be better on these days. Overall, I liked how Acros version 2 handled the winter, especially on sunny days. Next up is Ilford Ortho Plus 80. I've only shot a few rolls of this film in the winter, but so far it is one of my favorites. I especially love the shot of the snowdrift mounds. 
I felt it beautifully handled the mid-tones and scenes with indirect sunlight. This is another one of my favorites from this role. Again, I felt it handled indirect sunlight very well with the sun and shadows here. I tested a few scenes at night and thought it looks fairly good, but it didn't really wow me like some of the other black and white films did. Overall, shooting Ortho Plus was a great experience and one that I'll likely shoot more of this winter. Next up is Ilford XP2 Super 400. This is my most shot black and white film for two main reasons. It is just a great overall film and can be developed in C41. I think it handles sunny scenes very well. With the shadows and the light looking very pleasant. I also think it handles overcast days very well. I find the blacks, grays, and whites all very pleasant here especially in this shot. I also loved these scenes on a very snowy, misty day. I liked how the reflection of water and ice looked in these shots. And night scenes were very cool to shoot too. Overall, I think XP2 is one of the most versatile black and white films for winter that can handle just about any time of day. Next up is the discontinued Kodak Ektachrome 64T tungsten slide film. I was only able to get a few shots with this film in the winter, but much like the Fujichrome T64, it had a very blue cast that makes everything in the scene feel very icy cold. Overall, if I were able to shoot this again, I'd probably lean towards the Fuji version versus this one. Next up is the lovely Kodak Ektachrome 100 or E100 slide film. E100 was one of my favorite films to shoot in the winter. As mentioned before, because E100 has such strong blues, it can really accentuate the coldness of winter, but still maintains the warmness in the sunlight thus making sunny days have a great contrast between the warm sun and cold shade. On overcast days, I think the coldness is dialed up, making you want to bundle up even more. Overall, I think E100 is a great film to shoot in the winter, especially in sunny days to show the cold contrasted with sun. Next up is one of my most shot films, Kodak Ektar 100. Kodak Ektar is well known for really popping the reds, which translates to bringing out the colors of the pine trees. On sunny days, I think it has a great look to it. During golden hour, there's some pleasant contrasting between the cold snow and ice with the fading sunlight. Overcast days can look great if there are shades of brown, red, and other colors that the film tends to accentuate. However, in some instances, it doesn't handle low contrast light very well. Overall, Ektar is a great film for shooting during sunny days in the winter. Next up is Kodak Gold 200. Kodak Gold is famous for that warm golden light it can capture. And on sunny and golden hour days, this film shines in the winter. As the sun sets, it has a lovely look along the tree lines. as well as a nice glow reflecting in the ice.
On sunny days, it can really bring out the golden glow against the snow. And on overcast days, it can look pretty good if there are subjects with good colors in them. However, if there's too much neutral tones, it won't take advantage of the benefits of this film stock. Overall, I think Kodak Gold is a great film to shoot in the winter, especially during the sunny and golden hour times. Kodak Portra 100T is a now discontinued tungsten balance color negative film. I managed to shoot a few rolls of it in the winter, and I loved the creamy white look it gives. Overall, if this film was still around, it'd be a top choice to shoot in the winter at night. Next up is Kodak Portra 160. I haven't shot a lot of this film, but I liked how it looked in the indirect lighting conditions during golden hour. It's known for its more muted tones compared to Portra 400 and 800, and I think it can give a pleasing look in the winter. especially during the later hours of the day with the dwindling daylight. Overall, I think this is a film I would like to try more of during the winter. Next up is Kodak Portra 400, the most famous film stock. I'm going to be upfront here, I don't shoot a lot of Portra 400. I tend to like other 400 ISO stocks, I, but I think during the day it has a pleasing look in the sunny snow. On overcast days, I didn't think it had as strong of a look. Overall, I think if I shot more of this film, I'd try to shoot more during the day or golden hour than on low contrast days. Next up is Kodak Portra 800. Kodak Portra 800 is a great higher ISO color negative film that I think looks great especially during golden hour. The orange and pink glows of the setting sun look great against the cool white snow. For the most part, it can look good on overcast days and having enough light for handheld shots. You'll see more of how this film looks during the Christmas lights section. Overall, I think Portra 800 is a great film to shoot during the winter, especially if you want to go handheld during the golden hour. Next up is Kodak T-Max P3200, which is a multi-speed black and white negative film, something I just learned recently. I think this is a great film for shooting in the snow. I believe most of these shots were rated as 1600. I love shooting it both during the day and at night. I think the gritty graininess of the film stock actually adds more character and unique look to the film. It makes it feel like it's actually snowing more. Overall, I think this is a fun film to shoot in the winter and one I already plan to shoot more of this winter. Next up is Kodak Tri-X 400. I only shot one or two rolls with this film, so my findings are somewhat inconclusive, but I found it to handle low contrast scenes fairly well. It did seem like the blacks were a little bit crushed, but I might have underexposed it. Overall, I liked the look of this film, but would need to shoot more of it to see how it handles in more conditions. Next up is Kodak Ultramax 400. This is probably my favorite consumer grade film and I think it handles winter very well. Sunny days are warm and saturated with the brown trees contrasting well against the snowy landscape. In overcast conditions, I also felt it handled well with the trees and snow, not feeling too flat or bland. Overall, I think Kodak Ultramax is great in the sun and in the shade for winter. A great all-around film. Next up is Glomochrome Turquoise, a creative effect film. 
This film was really fun to shoot, especially on sunny days in the winter. The orange sky contrasted with the white snow gave a cool look. However, I didn't really enjoy the look on overcast days. It just looked like almost turquoise leaning sepia toned images. I did shoot a few shots at night, but I would be interested to try more. Overall, if you want something funky in the winter, turquoise might be fun to try. I plan to shoot more of it and try some Lomochrome Purple this winter. Next up is Lomography Color 100. This film is similar to Cinestill 50D in that it's not a film I regularly shoot the rest of the year, but it turned out really pleasant during sunny days in the winter. Something about the warmness looks really good. In a lot of ways, it really reminds me of Kodak Gold to me. Overall, I thought it was a very good film. I didn't shoot during any other conditions in the winter, but it might be a good one to try. Next up is Lomography Color 400. This film has a very subtle pastel look for Golden Hour. I liked how the last bits of sunlight in the background mixed with the snow gave a very creamy look. And during sunset, there was a lovely saturation to the images against the cold backgrounds. During overcast days, it maintained a very subtle look to me that I enjoyed. Overall, I would say Lomo Color 400 is a great all-around film to try in the winter. I want to shoot more of it this winter in more conditions. And last is Lomography Color 800. I only shot a few rolls of it, so my results may be inconclusive, but I would say it handles bright scenes very well, and golden and blue hour scenes very well, especially if you want to go handheld. This is another film I plan to shoot more of this year. Now let's look at films I've shot during Christmas and other winter holidays with lights. But first I'll share a few comparisons. In this example, you can see Cinestill 800T and Portrait 800 have the most glow and halation in the lights. I liked how the Cinestill BWXX looked for black and white. And the last two are just other examples I have. Pro 400H always looks great with greens and reds. The Lomo Turquoise is a fun and unique look. Christmas lights at night also have very different looks depending on the film stock. My personal favorites were the Cinestill 800T and the Fujichrome T64. And one film that was really fun to shoot was the turquoise side by side against normal film. I loved how the Lomochrome turquoise looked kind of normal in the right shot, but side by side now it looks even more weird. I think the giveaway is if you look at the interior lights in the upper level of the house in the turquoise shot, they have that eerie turquoise green. So now we'll take a look at each film starting with Cinestill 800T. It's a fun film to shoot during Diwali with all the candles or when you have your Christmas tree up. I think it has a very lovely warm nostalgia glow to it. Or if you're walking around the neighborhood looking at the Christmas lights. I enjoyed going to Hollow Dazzle, which is a winter art festival. The halation has a nice glow to them that works great this time of year. Overall, I think Cinestill 800T is a go-to at this time of year for capturing the Christmas and other holiday lights. Next is Cinestill BWXX. I only managed to get these two shots of it during the Christmas lights time, but definitely plan to shoot more of it this year. I did like how the glow of the lights were for the Christmas tree. Next up is Fujichrome T64. I love how the cool blues of this film contrast with the different colors of the lights. Here again you can see how the snow looks very frosty and cold and contrasts well with the red lights. What's interesting is some lights don't turn that cool blue for the T64. Overall it was one of my favorite films and I would still shoot it today if it was available. Next up is Fuji MPL 160T. This film has a very pleasant look with Christmas lights. I really like this shot and how the snow looks kind of a purplish blue. I especially love this shot and how the joy lights glowed in the snow. Overall, I think it's a very good film, especially with the more red and purple lights. Fujicolor Pro 400H is next. And these are the only two shots I had of the Pro 400 for Christmas. 
but as you can see, it handles greens and reds very well. I really like the shot on the right, which I took in Costa Rica. Next is Ilford XP2 Super 400. I loved how the lights look for XP2 and how it contrasted in these scenes. Overall, I would definitely check out XP2 for Christmas lights and night photography in the winter. Next is Kodak Portra 100T. I managed to get these two shots of the Christmas lights. Overall, I did like the other films better for the Christmas lights, but if it was still being sold, I would get more of it and try some more. Next is Kodak Portra 800. I loved the warm glow of the Christmas lights for Kodak Portra 800. I think if you don't like the way Halation looks on Cinestill 800T, that I would recommend Portra 800. Christmas lights in the neighborhood had a nice glow to them as well. Overall, I think this would be a top choice for Christmas lights. Next is Tri-X 400. This is the only shot I got of the Christmas tree lights. I think Cinestill BWXX was much better, but it might be worth trying more of this film during this time of year. And last is Lomochrome Turquoise. As you've seen, it has a very strange but cool way of showing Christmas lights. I especially liked how the red tail lights turned blue here. At first glance, this one looks almost normal but has a very unnatural look. Then the Joy House gives this cool turquoise look. I liked it even more without the Joy letters and the turquoise glow of the lights. And out and about it turned other lights into very strange colors. Overall, it's a fun film to shoot during Christmas and I highly recommend trying it. And I'm going to try shooting some Lomo Purple for Christmas lights this year. So after watching all these film stocks, let's try to answer the question which film is actually best for winter. I've organized this in five categories. Christmas holiday lights, snow when it's sunny, snow when it's cloudy, snow during sunset, and snow during night. And in each category, I'll share my top three choices for color film and the top one for black and white. For the Christmas and holiday lights category, I gotta say, I think that Cinestill 800T is the top choice. It has the great halations and the nostalgic and warm look. If you're not into the halations though, I would go as a runner up, The Portrait 800. I think it's a great film. It's very nostalgic, it's very warm. It looks very good for Christmas lights. Next up, I'm gonna go a little funky and go with Loma Chrome Turquoise. I think it's a really fun film that can add a lot of uh, unique looks to your photography for the season. And then as far as black and white film goes, I gotta say, I think the Cine Still BWXX looked the best. It's very high contrast, very dark blacks and very white whites, which if you're trying to capture the Christmas lights, it looks great. Next, let's talk about capturing snow on sunny days. For here, my top choice is gonna be Ektar 100. I think this is a great all around film for especially sunny days. It's very warm, it helps the pine trees and other colors in the scene really pop. After that, I would recommend going with Ektachrome 100. I think it's a great film as we saw. It did very well with on sunny days with showing the warmth of the sun, but also the blues of Ektachrome 100 played very well with snow. Next up, I'd say that either Sydney Still 50D or Lomography 100 was very good for sunny days. Again, for both these films, I'm not a huge fan of shooting these throughout most of the year, but for some reason, they just, they have this lovely warmth to them in the snow. And then as far as my favorite black and white film for sunny days is gonna be Fuji Acros 100. Next, I'm gonna talk about cloudy days in the snow, or I'm gonna kind of say this is a category of also just kind of a good all-arounder, because if it can handle cloud, it can handle sun and night and golden hour. So first up in this category, I would say is that Kodak Ultramax was my favorite. I loved how it handled sun. I love how it handled cloudy days. I loved how it did in kind of the more golden hour. I didn't shoot it much at night, but I think especially it was a good all around film. Next up, I really liked how Cinestill 400D actually handled the mixed lighting from the cl cloudy, misty days to the sunny days. So I think this is a good film, especially during some of the golden hour indirect sunlight days with the halations in the sky. It, it had a very pleasant look to it in the snow. Third, I would go with Portrait 400. This is a film you know I don't shoot that much, but I think if you want a good all around film for the winter, this is a good way to go. And then for the black and white category, I'd say go with the XP2. This did very well in cloudy conditions, sunny conditions at night. So if you just want a good all arounder, um, I would go with Ilford XP2. 
For the next category, I'm going to talk about snow during kind of that golden hour, sunset, blue hour time frame. First, I got to give it to Velvia 50. I think this is the, the best film for this time, especially during the winter. It really adds that feeling of either being very cold and blue or when the sun is setting, the, the reds and oranges and purples go very well with the white snow and the, the bluish cool feeling. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I would say when it's very kind of late day, uh, getting close to golden hour or golden hour, Kodak Gold was very nice. I loved how it looked. It contrasted well with the yellows and the, the white snow. And then if you're going handheld and you're really getting close to that golden hour sunset time frame, Portrait 800 I thought turned out very well. I liked how it looked with the snow. I liked how it looked with the sunset. I would go with that, or I would actually say the Lomography uh, 400 did very well too during this time. So either that or maybe the 800 of the Lomography had very pleasant tones during that kind of golden hour sunset time. For the black and white category, I really liked Ilford Ortho Plus. I liked how it handled both sunlight as well as kind of indirect mixed lighting. This film just, uh, something about it, it, it really wowed me during the kind of the sunny and uh, indirect times. As far as night, I didn't like it as much. And when there was a little bit less lighting, I think cloudy, it was, it was okay. But for sunny and kind of sunset time frames, I loved this film. And now for snow at night, I got to give it to the Fujichrome T64. You know, I wanted to keep most of these about for films that are still available, but I still, this is my favorite film. I, I love this film and how it looks. The blues in contrast with like the reds and purples of, of lights or Christmas lights, it just goes very well. But a nice close second is going to be Sinistel 800T. This is, you know, it's still available. It's, it's a very good one to choose during these winter months where you're trying to get either Christmas lights at night or trying to get ski slopes or other places that have like lights at night with the snow. And next, here's another discontinued film stock, but I really loved the creamy white looks of Portrait 100T. So if this were still around, I would definitely get it. And then for black and white, I'd have to say I loved the T-Max P3200. I thought especially during the late day, close to golden hour, close to during the nighttime, the, the grittiness of the grain actually worked very well in favor with the black and white and just I thought added a really cool texture this time of year. Hey, thanks so much for watching the video. I can't believe you made it all the way through, but I really appreciate that you did. So I um, hope you really enjoyed that. I would love to hear from you what your favorite film stocks were. And, uh, you know, if you liked the video, give a thumbs up. And if you want to check out some of my other content, I've done some other film comparison videos like Tungsten Film or... Lomography Purple versus Color Plus for fall and that kind of fun stuff, as well as some videos around travel content. So if you'd love to check out more of my stuff, I'd really dig it. So thanks again for watching and happy shooting. <laughs>